Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. I've got an epic game for you today. It's been a while since we had a big, bold, awesome game, and I think this is going to fulfill all of those qualifications. We've got rankings ranging from 1,400 all the way up through to 2,100. Got some great players, some average Joes, and a pretty good representation of all of the factions on the map Sirtis Major. Let's go ahead and introduce the teams and get started on this game. We've got God and L taking UEF on the top left. Happy taking UEF. Patrick Pones, he's going to be taking Aeon. We've actually got the 2100 and the 2000 rank on the same team. Uh, there is a 2100 on the other team to balance it out, but there's a slight ranking advantage towards the north. We've got Jolly taking Aeon and then another UEF for Griff. So two Aeon, three UEF. On the southern team, we have West Mania taking Seraphim. Demersal, that would be, let's see, that would be a rename of Obfuscation's ACU, who is Blodeer. He is taking Cybern. Eco Noob taking Seraphim. Raymerend as Cybern, and then a UEF for Super. So we've got all five factions, or all four factions, holy cow, four factions for five players on the southern team. While we're watching these early builds go down, you can see we've got a... Most everybody's going for the early Hydro. We've got a couple of air factories down there. This is a map that takes a little bit to get going, so there's not going to be too much to see for the first couple of minutes. I do have to mention, as a lot of you have probably already noticed, there is no mini-map in the bottom corner. That would be because I took the Windows 10 upgrade, and that is going to be a massive power stall for Griff because he started his land factory without finishing his hydro. There we go, now he's good. I took the Windows 10 upgrade and apparently it broke the dual monitor support for Supreme Commander. So as an open call to anyone who has Windows 10, if you know how to make that work again, then please, please let me know how to get dual monitors working. Because that is the setup that I was using to get the fully representative mini-map over here on the bottom right. That is actually a screen capture of my second monitor layered over top. So until I can get that working, I can't use that. I can bring up the little mini-map on the side, but to me that thing is really, really annoying. So I'm going to cast my next couple of games like this and just work on a solution for my regular mini-map implementation over the next few days. All right, Super is laying down some land factories up on the edge and he's already got a tank and scout out which is gonna move over to the right and try to lock down this expansion. Anytime you can deny mass extractors, it is a good day even if you're in a team game. So yeah, maybe that will help him out just a little bit. Looks like he's got two engineers moving. Maybe that will do some good. Got one factory down for Griff who is immediately going for a T2 mass extractor upgrade. Um, obviously, on Sirtis, there are loads and loads of rocks everywhere. Tons of mass to be reclaimed. These numbers are going to shoot up very, very rapidly. And, of course, that's going to let everybody tech up a whole bunch right off the bat. Already got a steady stream of units heading up to the left side. It looks like West Mania and Eco Noob are both pushing their ACUs up and both have a substantial amount of units coming with them to go claim this side. Of course, there's four mechs there. It's actually a really sneaky move by Pappy building two land factories up on the Mesa so that he will be able to deny anything that comes up here. I'm not sure that I've seen that particularly thing done before. It's always cool to see new stuff that you maybe didn't think about before. That's going to let him get artillery over to this cliff edge and take out that mass extractor and any other units that are streaming up along that edge without actually having to go through the pass over here. The only bad thing is going to be if Eco Noob gets his ACU up in there and kills those two factories. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. And so we got two ACUs moving over to the right as well. Raymarand is moving that way. Um, Jolly's out on his own though. He does have his ACU out front. But Griff is going to be in the back, so we're not going to see any aggressive ACU play from him. Actually, there's 100% engineers going up on the right as well, so Jolly is going to be out in the middle of nowhere with his ACU almost totally unsupported with only a single factory in the back. I like the thought of the bomber. The bomber made it across the map at least two-thirds of the way, but at the end, 
failed to kill the engineer and immediately got shot down so not much good going on there artillery taking out the t1 point defense right here in the middle of course everyone wants to get the reclaim that is in the center Patrick Pones has already got t2 on his ACU at five minutes that's gonna let him throw down some oblivion turrets and hopefully deny any troop movements on this edge got to be careful when you're in the middle here I've actually seen multiple ACUs die before because if you're standing next to those t3p gens when they go up you lose a pretty substantial chunk of your health on your commander before you can really do anything about it looks like Demersal has also got t2 on his comm and that's gonna let him set up a t2 point defense trap of his own on this side of course the civilian shields are gonna get in the way of everything because civilians never accomplished anything good for anyone but hey you do what you can I'm gonna pop that shield gen first thing and then begin firing at the other alrighty then on the north side we've got a pretty substantial tank movement let's see four land factories a fifth going down and it looks like a paused is that gun I think it's gun no it's not that is t2 all right, that is a T2 upgrade going down on the ACU. So he should be able to turtle up fairly well right there and support himself. Two T1 bombers headed across. Everybody loves bombers, especially Rammer, and apparently that's the second and third total this game. And that is going to be devastating if it actually hits anything. <laughs> of course, as we all know, Auroras are pitifully weak HP-wise and they will go down in a heartbeat to a couple of T1 bombers. I do love this Mantis run-by. When was the last time you saw a total, complete run-by on a five-player map with choke points? That's going to get all up in this base, kill off that upgrading uh, mass extractor. Thankfully, it just started. That's not going to be a huge loss, but he is going to lose the power generator as well, or the energy storage, rather, and some build power. Come on, kill that, kill that. You need to hit that one because that is worth the mass. There you go. And a little bit of trouble over here for Jolly. He does not have any upgrades on his ACU. None whatsoever. <laughs> Happy dancing Blackheart. Usually, I really hate naming mods. Some of them can be mildly funny at times. But in the end, you just end up with this huge sea of green. It gets really annoying to look at. Especially when you have a green faction color choice as well. So, Jolly is going to go for the T2 air. He is going to try to hold that pass by himself with his ACU. You can see over there in the chat, Griff is useless. Well, not entirely useless because he is getting T2 mass extractor upgrades. But, of course, mass extractor upgrades don't do you any good when you're getting overrun by tanks. He is, however, going to throw a triad down, which is going to be helpful. Most of the stuff in the middle is dead and reclaimed. And we do have the notorious Viper spam coming out by Bloodier, or from Bloodier rather. Can't have Cybern without some good old Viper spam. Cerberus turret being built kind of down in the hole. I have no idea why Bloodier built that there, but that is probably the single worst place on this map to build a point defense. Well chosen piece of real estate there, bud. TMD going down. Not sure why you're building TMD. There are no... Well, I guess... Uh, yeah, if there was a mobile... Or not a mobile missile launcher. If there was a attack launcher on this side, that would protect his base. So I guess there is a certain amount of usefulness there. But it just seems like a really odd thing to do. Griff going to put himself out there a little bit. Zap up some of that reclaim. Going to lose a couple of engineers to that bomber, though. And then it is immediately going to get shot down. The air coverage is pretty decent on the north side. Nobody's going super heavy air, but there are enough random interceptors around that bombers don't get too many passes before they go down. Pappy's throwing down some T2 point defense, but yep, there is the name that I cannot pronounce. Ithissa, something like that. Why does Seraphim always have to have impossible to pronounce names? I suppose we'll never know. Patrick Pones down to about half health and trying to build some tech 2 point defense behind TMD but unfortunately even the Aeon TMD cannot keep up with the Viper spam it's the one thing that it does do well against because it does not split the missile it simply consumes the missiles one at a time but at the same time it is it does not fire fast enough or the Vipers fire too fast 
for it to be fully effective. These guys are going to start laying down some fire on that point fence. Going to do a fantastic job of eliminating the one protection that those two factories have. And then once that is gone, these guys should be able to wipe that out. And then there will be no more worries about the units coming from that direction. Ilshiva going to wipe out a huge amount of T1 artillery. Of course, the walking T1 point defense is going to get it done better than just about anything else can. And that is why we all build Ilshivas. Unless you let them sit in one spot and take artillery fire to the face, that is not going to do very well. Godinel is backing up his his uh, teammate really well here. Pappy and God are both building T2 point defense, and there is a tremendous amount of T1 tanks moving out from Orange, and that is going to do a pretty dang good job of dropping that shield and distracting the point defense so that Pappy's PD can lay in some damage without really being countered. That is going to be yet another run by in this game. Units slipping through the cracks all over the place here. Griff trying to set up enough point defense in this gap that he will not lose out to the T1 here. Shouldn't be that hard to do, and he is building an awful lot of radar there. Setting two up, I guess he's taking for granted that there's going to be T1 bombers coming from this side and that they will probably wreak havoc with his light strushers. You know, only 10 HP, they make prime targets for pretty much anything because you could probably shoot down a fly and the crash damage would kill that radar. Westmania, try making some units. I heard that works really well in FAF. <laughs> oh, the salt. The salt is strong in the higher ranking games. Let's see, Jolly has got resource allocation finished. That means, yep, he is going ARAS, and then he will probably be getting a T3 air factory online before too much longer, which means we'll probably be seeing a strap bomber rush, because I don't think anyone else is even remotely close to T3 air. There's a T2 building Corsairs, but Raymarand has nowhere near the power income to handle T3 output. Oh, look at the drops! We've got Medusa's incoming, and there are no combat units whatsoever in the back. Corsairs coming in. Those are going to go after all of the build power and mechs is in the back. Unfortunately, they're all going to get shot down. But hey, that's where Medusa's come into play. These guys will be able to move in and eliminate large portions of that base, hopefully very, very quickly. There is a flapjack building, but no combat units, no point defense going down, nothing whatsoever in the way of useful things to have versus artillery. So these Medusas are pretty much just gonna have free reign of the base, which is epic on anyone's terms. There's an artillery vetting, actually. Take out the power, that is the primary target. There we go, focus fired on the T2P gen. That's what we are looking for. The T1 artillery, as I was pointing out earlier, is able to take care of anything on this edge from the cliff. So that was not eliminated earlier, mostly thanks to the counter push over here that distracted pink and gray. So that T1 artillery was able to take out a couple of support factories, a T2 mechs, and now they're moving in to lay down some fire, or at least attempt to lay down some fire on blue. I don't think there is enough reach there, though, to accomplish that. The T2 P gen is gone. Unfortunately, all of the artillery is down. Some wreckage littering the base. We lost a, well, two. Two T2 mechs, a T2P gen, almost all of the build power in the base, and a whole lot of T1 power. So Griff is probably stalling, actually. 522 income, he's not stalling, but he is heavily, heavily depending on overflow from his teammates. Never, ever a good place to be. Pappy's moving forward. He still has the T2 upgrade only on his commander. He is probably, yes, going to try to set up a little bit of a defensive posture right here and then probably move to this edge. Of course, if you can build any uh, T2 point defense on that cliff, you're going to be able to clear out large swaths of territory from a relatively protected position. And I spy Trebuchet Fire, the glorious red fireworks that are the incredibly destructive Cybran artillery. Those guys are going to absolutely purge the face of the earth of Petric Pone's units. 
and then continue to lay down fire on that ACU. There is the Strat Bomber as predicted. Jolly trying to clean up some of this mess with T2 gunships as he bombs out Eco with the happy Captain Chlorgas. <laughs> uh, some of the names in FAF just tickle my innards to no limit. That is two mechs down and probably many, many more to come. Hopefully, anyway, you invest in that strap bomber, you want to be able to do a lot of damage. ASF coming in to tag out those interceptors and eliminate any resistance to the bombings. And that looks like they are going to continue quite nicely. 11 kills on that guy so far. Patrick Pones moving out to directly engage the enemy. He is going to get it within firing range of all of this T1 artillery. What has he got on his ACU? Just the T2 upgrade, so no gun, no shield, none of that stuff. Here comes a second strap bomber for Jolly, but there's a Sam in the way that time. He's going to take a large amount of damage. Dropped after a single T2 mass extractor. Captain Chlorgas is still going strong, though. Up to 29 kills. And looping back around, it looks like that's going to be a kill, yes, on the T2 mass extractor and a bunch of engineers. There she blows, and kaboom! Wait, that is an Aeon strat, which means that it has little to no area of effect. Should have placed it on the other side. Could have killed all those engineers in one go. Totally wasted opportunity. Up on the top left, there was limited resistance before, but now there's pretty much no resistance. There's the T2 point defense on the edge of the cliff as predicted and a glorious army of T1 artillery moving in to bomb out what little remains of Westmania's forward position. He does have T3 land, which means that once he gets a couple of tanks up, he should be able to clean up all of this quite nicely before the moment he is definitely on his back foot as he's defending against this invasion, pressing up to his very doorstep. Jolly's still kind of chilling out over here on the outside edge. He's got his resource allocation upgrade still on his ACU. And he's just kind of sucking up all the mass that he can and doing his best to make up for Griff. Where is Griff? Griff is currently in the back here building up T2 power generators, trying to get his power situation resolved. Not much left of his base, though. Lots of flapjacks moving in and gradually taking out all of his mass extractors. I don't like the look of Yellow's base at the moment. It looks like Petrick is under some heavy fire from those trebuchets. There is a shield up. Unfortunately, shields tend to go down when they're under artillery fire. There's a T3 factory, but man, he's got to do some good things. Get some shields up, get something online to avoid losing that thing, because he's already under half health, and that's where all the fire is going. He's got two serenities of his own, but I don't know that he's going to be able to do much, but here comes his teammate. We have a huge... That is about a dozen flapjacks pounding away at Bloatier's base. There's bricks moving in to engage the T2 units coming from the back. He actually looped all the way around the back to try to take some pressure off of Petrick Pones. Bloatier did have to pull his T3 artillery to the side, so he's going to have to readjust his firing pattern, and that lost him some time. Nice work by God Enel probably just saved Petrick Pone's butt. He was down to 2,900 health and under some pretty stiff fire. I love it when stuff like that happens, when you have teammates that actually say, hey, my teammate's in trouble. We should totally go help him out. Eco Noob getting the ARAS online, and he's got his couple of ASF out there. I know I kind of got distracted from those strap bombers earlier, or that single strap bomber, but there were just a couple of ASF that came out that were able to kill that thing off. And here we have the first T4 of the game. Galactic Colossus moving out. Is there any other T4 in production? I don't think so. There is a T2 land factory. These guys are going to have to do something drastic very, very soon. Otherwise, that GC is going to stomp all over them. Thankfully, they do have air control. That is one thing they do have going for them. Maybe they'll be able to strap bomb it out. It takes quite a few strats to drop a GC, though. The 
which is a major, major problem. Blodir making the wise decision to begin his retreat, I think. Maybe he's pegged against the shield. I'm not sure what's going on there. Yes, he is moving back. And Jolly is going to go over to the right. There is a tack launcher there. I'm not sure how much damage that was actually able to do because there are TMD in the way. So I think that was pretty much a fail proposition. He is going to retreat. There is a T2 transport, which has been gifted to him by Raymarant, I believe. He's the only cyber in... Nope. It's either Raymarant. Yeah, it is Raymarant. He's got the T3 factory. So Coolio, more helping a teammate out. You gotta have that T2 transport when your ACU is in that much danger. I would not be here if I was Bloodier. That is just entirely too exposed for what point of the game we're in. I mean, at any moment, he could have a GC descending upon him. He could have a tax snipe from the bases back here. He is just way, way too far out front. Transport drop in the ACU just on the other side of the cliff. That's very, very odd. Eco Noob's going to throw down a chicken. Maybe that will be able to deny the GC. That just depends on whether the GC vets up a lot and whether or not it can be heavily damaged because the Yathotha, if I'm not totally mistaken, the Yathotha does, well, I know that it does more damage, but it has less health, but I think it has slightly more range than the GC. So which one wins kind of depends on the angle of engagement and intel, that kind of thing. Um, but if the GC has taken any substantial damage at all, it will usually die pretty easily to a Yathotha. Moving in, probably going to vet soon, 57, actually 50 kills, some of them were T2 so they count more, is about to take over a veterancy and that will make it yet harder to kill. But it is headed apparently for the ASCU here, Super is in a bit of trouble upgrading Fluffy Shield. That is a new one, I've never seen that notification before. I guess Fluffy Shield and Hard Shield would be the two. Jolly still building air for all he's worth in the back. Of course, you got to get air control. Strat Bomber moving in from Raymoran. That is going to lay down a little bit of much needed damage on that GC. And that T2 transport just barely got that ACU out of there. 25 health remaining. Holy smokes. That. It didn't get sucked up by the tractor claw and the beam damaged it down to 25 HP and it did not die. Holy cow, that is escaping by the skinnier teeth if I've ever seen it. <laughs> now Jolly does have a pretty significant number of ASF. So that's gonna make things a little bit more difficult for the left side, south side team, whatever you wanna call it. Blue has got a total of three ASF to his name. And pink is not much better. Eco Noob does not have enough to be engaging like he is. These guys are going to have to deal with this Galactic Colossus very, very soon. And there it is. The chicken is online and the GC is down to 6,100 health. So as long as he doesn't pick up another veterancy and as long as he continues to take Ravager fire, which is amazing how far sometimes the Ravager uh, shoots. And it's not going to fire again for us. You forget how much that thing arcs. Because it really is a ballistic projectile. Sometimes it will skip over entire sections of terrain. Almost like a little artillery in some regards. But especially when you turn your back, you're going to lose to a chicken. Because you can't fire with your face beam when you are facing the other direction. Pretty self-explanatory, I would think. Percival's moving in on Bloodier's position. Those are going to be able to take anything Cerberus turrets can throw at them. There are a couple of breaks, and the shields are more worrying than anything else, but I think that those Percival should have absolutely no problem whatsoever. Also, Galactic Colossus. Bloodier is going to need to do something drastic because he is way, way, why? Why would you walk into seven Percivals? That makes no sense. There goes Bloodier in a very predictable inferno because why? Why would you do such a thing? There's Rambo Com and then there's Stupid Com. And I believe that was Stupid Com. 
Happy Dexter is going to get denied by that chicken there, though. So, middle is free of conflict. <clears throat> Excuse me. Free of conflict for at least a little while longer. And there is the mother of all reclaimed fields in the back here. T3 P-Gens, T3 Mechs, T3 HQ. Enough mass to build an army. Looks like Raymarand is intending to build more megaliths. He's getting some power online so he can do it better. And Eco Noob is getting some more Yathothas on track. Appears that's going to be... Oh, nope, there is a Fat Boy. So several T4s going down for this team. Strap Bombers coming in from Jolly, just wreaking havoc on whatever they can reach. Jolly has no plans for further Galactic Colossus. Colossi, Colossus is... is and Godanel is working up a fat boy. He does have a Rambo com though. Doesn't have the gun upgrade. I would love to see the gun upgrade. But he does have personal shield and T3, which is about the best health combination you can have. Patrick Pones. What? He has got shield. Single shield. He has got T2. He does not even have range. And he is going to dive in and deal with the Yathotha point blank with the help of Happy Dexter. Also the Megalith that is firing at him from extended range and missing a little bit because of ACU dodges, but be thankful you have shielding because otherwise you would be dead. Very, very, very dead. Well, at least his shield, did his shield go down? Yes, it did. Just barely. He lost like maybe, I don't think he even lost health. The projectile took the shield down, and he did not take damage on his ACU, but he gets the sped up uh, recharge time of the shield going completely down instead of having to regen the shield. That also distracted the Megalith just barely long enough for that GC to kill it with the help of a couple of strap bombers. Well done, Northern team. Especially Petrick Pones. Balls to the wall on the forward position there. Come on, man. Get the gun upgrades at least. Make more GCs, Petrick Pone says. Well, oh, yeah, he's got mass. Coolio. Probably going after this reclaim with his engineers. I don't think I've seen that before. I don't think I've ever seen anyone willingly attack a Yathotha when they do not even have gun upgrade. But hey, if the only way you're going to stop it is with overcharges, you better get your butt on the line and do something. A fully... A full health Yathoth is moving in, though. I was about to say fully regen, but that thing really hasn't been in much of a fight. Patrick Pones is going to bail on that one. I would, too, if I were you, buddy. There is no shame in running when you know you're going to die. There's another... Well, that is the same GC. Maybe he will be able to do a little bit of denial, but a couple of sniper shots, and that guy's going to go down. Not going to end well. Up here on the north side... Still building away on that fat boy. Still turtling up. Still nothing much going on. And there's the reclaim drop. Ever so critical when you're dealing with a situation like this. When you lose mass, you lose the game. Actually, let's check the reclaim numbers. 24,000 for Jolly. 41 for Super. 35 for Raymarian, then we got 50, 14, 13, 20 for obfuscation before he died. Patrick Pones with 37, 24 for West Mania, and Griff with 10. So a little bit of a reclaim advantage to the Southern team, and that is going to become more substantial as these wrecks are picked up. We've got the Megalith that just got laid down, and no! Strap Bomber on the Engineers. Typically... Strap bombing engineers is a completely worthless endeavor, but when you're strap bombing engineers that are reclaiming T4 wrecks, that means you're directly denying mass income, which actually works out in your favor. Yathothas are very tall. Very, very tall. Also, you're making footprints out of time with your actual steps. Subcom, why you so glitchy? the brave little expansion that could over here in the corner. Let's just build Medusas out of one factory with tons of engineers assisting. We've got nothing else going on over here. Looks like that fat boy is going to move up. Grim, or not Grim, Griff. 
has the tack launcher upgrade, which is currently charged. That's another thing I want to see in a game at some point. I would love to see a Billy. Patrick Pones overcharging another Yathotha to death, and he is going to retreat. He has finally replaced his T2 with range, which is what let him get that Yathotha from so far away, but his shield is nearly depleted once again. Honestly, if you have the option to kill, um, to kill an opponent, it's almost worth it to let your shield go completely down because then you don't have the uber long recharge time. It's uh, 37 regen a second on that shield and it, I believe it's like 300 something if it has been depleted. Attack launcher out and away for, is that for the megalith? It looks like no, it is for something down here. What are you shooting at my friend? The northern team is gonna get that GC or at least a small portion of it. Oh, he didn't know the shield was there. Megalith doing its best to chew through all of those shields, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much the most mass efficient way to stall a Megalith that there is, because it takes a couple of shots to drop the shields, a couple of shots to dispatch them, and they're very, very cheap. Fatboy chewing into Griff's base. Poor guy has been harassed this entire game, and now he's going to lose his base permanently. That's, uh, that is a very discouraging way to play. Griff launching away at another target. That is going to be on the Megalith, helping to kill that thing. 6,000 damage is no laughing matter when you're taking away in the tens. Annoyed Dexter is going to succeed in dropping that son of a gun, and that is that. Patrick Pone's going to throw down a land factory, probably getting ready to reclaim everything that he can. And now the northern side is the stronger one from the reclaim perspective because they have four T4s laid out right in front of them like a buffet. They're going to be able to do whatever they damn well please with all that mass. There's a fat boy on the north side. Unfortunately, it is about to go down to that Yathotha. Never ever run into the Yathotha. You're going to have a bad time. Bloatier saying, kill the ACU. Where can they kill the ACU? I don't really see anything that could do that. Unless he's talking about that one. But there are so many mobile shields and a quarter charged personal shield that I don't think that's ever going to happen. Raging Dexter taking some hits from those Percivals. Is it going to be enough? I think so. Maybe. Come on. There it is. Half health on the fat boy. And he is going to survive. I'm a survivor. No. Just no, Brink. Lightning storms away. Thankfully far enough outside the base that they can't actually do any significant damage, but terrifying nonetheless. Can you imagine if that cyclone of fire was moving towards you on an open prairie? Probably need a new pair of britches. I hear... There it is, right there. Let's say, I hear one... But where is it? At this point, if you have tack launchers, which there is one, more building, you can actually tack missile the wrecks that you know you're not going to get anyway, and it destroys the mass for the other team, instead of letting them have all of this glorious income, which they can then recycle into more units to throw at you. So in some cases, it is actually favorable to act like a three-year-old. Well, if you can't have it, no one can. Or, well, if I can't have it, no one can't, would be the proper phrasing on that. Yeah. Throw a tantrum. Win at subcom. Maybe, maybe the salty people are the ones who get good, and it's not the people who get good tend to be salty because bad things happen. Maybe that's the way it goes. I guess we'll never really know. Fatboy is trying to take out Kresdi otherwise known as Galactic Colossus number seven or eight at this point. The fire, it burns! At least you have auxiliary shielding to go hide under. That's the awesome thing about the Fat Boy. It is probably the only experimental that is worth its mass because it can fire at such a great range with such tremendous damage output 
that you can lay waste to pretty much anything before it reaches you. The problem is it sucks so hard at close range combat that the thing dies immediately at the slightest scratch. Just like that. We're talking about a sub 20,000 health Galactic Colossus taking out a fat boy because it stared at it long enough. Alright, Ravager, why are you not firing? Hello? Okay, well, you can just die then. And there's the firing cycle. <laughs> 1,000 health, come on! Nope, there's the other fat boy though, and it will gladly do the dirty deed. Creak and groan. That is the mother of all face plants right there. Burying itself in the dirt. We got another fat boy, so that will make two on the left hand side, three on the left hand side because there's two building at once, one for each player. But there are two Yathathas and a Megalith approaching the mid. I know Percivals are strong, but they are not that strong. Unless the T3 units stream in, then they might have a chance. Yathatha with no shield support going to come in first, going to soak all of the damage from those Percivals, but that Megalith shooting from the back. It's just a terrifying force to be reckoned with. Please stop with the naming mod. I'm done. I'm no longer entertained. There are too many names. Bad with names. Another GC coming in. Patrick Pones decided that he wanted to get in on that Galactic Colossus action. Patrick Pones running away. Half health on his shield. Is that still regening from before? More than likely. Apparently he's deciding not to try his luck again. He overcharged two Yathathas to death and he's going to call it a day. Just move back. <laughs> Artillery is shooting his fat boy. See that's the one bad thing that you always have to remember. If you've got two people working together in a firebase, it's almost better for one, well not almost, it is. Better for one person to assist the other. And there's Mercies coming in for the Yathathas. The targeting solution is so bad on those AA cannons that the Mercy's able to just slip right in there. No problem whatsoever. Not so easy to slip past ASF though. It is better when you're building a fire base for one player to assist the other so that all of the point defense and everything that comes up belongs to one player. Because you can't friendly fire your own defensive structures, but you can friendly fire your teammates. So that means that everyone does worse when you've got two people in a firebase. Three T4s focused on a single Galactic Colossus, four Strat Bombers clipping away into the back. I'm not sure those were on that Galactic Colossus, but Jolly's commander is semi-tangled in engineers and very, very exposed. That many strat bombers, I think, could have actually broken straight through and killed him. He is going to lose air control, though, so that is a good thing for the South team. This has been hard-pressed the entire time in the southern direction. The South has had a pretty difficult time. As far as that early Galactic Colossus that did a lot of damage, losing Blodir, that was a big one, losing an entire base. That is a long distance tack snipe right there. Where are you headed? Was that for the fat boy? Something. It's gonna take down a shield somewhere, I have no doubt. And collision. Looks like it was headed maybe for those fat boys, something like that. But that is gonna take down one shield anyway. Strat Bomber still Plinking away at Raging Steerborn. And there's the NG drop to claim that other wreck. Nicely done there. I do dearly love broadswords because they are so freaking strong. 300 ish damage per second. Definitely a gunship worthy of respect. Let's see, we've got one, two, three, and four fat boys on the move in mid. Fourth, not quite built yet, but there's not much on this southern side to deny them. Especially two running together. 
because two can easily defend themselves against single T4s. Broadsword's moving into the back, trying to kill off that Galactic Colossus. I think they would be better off targeting an ASCU because this is worrisome. If that breaks through, it's going to cause some major, major issues for this team. But Jolly's going to retreat to the shield, I think. Well, no, all of his ASF are dead, and he has no Sams. The damage output on those broadswords is just so freaking high. That ASCU is probably going to go down. Yes. There goes the nuke. Jolly by far had the biggest T4 factory out of any of these guys and had almost the entire air presence. Strat Bombers moving in on the fat boys out here. That one's going to be easy picking since it lost its shield all those tack launchers. Even the tiniest thing can make a difference sometimes. And dual, well not dual Yathathas, a single Yathatha and a Megalith moving up the mid towards Godinel, who's got that personal shield on. I wish he would have had gun upgrade. He could get it very, very quickly. Jolly, not sure what the top is doing after I strat infinite mexes. That was not exactly infinite mexes. Maybe seven or eight, something like that. I would say no more than ten. Oh, got an L taking fire from the megalith and from a horde of broadswords. Look at the damage numbers rack up on that ACU. That is why broadswords are so much fun. They have a good amount of health, and they have a very, very big gun. Got an L going to go up in Nuclear Oblivion. Griff is pretty dang heavily damaged as well. He is going to go up. You know, there's a lot of superior firepower on the ground. Not enough air power, though. Griff may or may not live. Last one's knocked down by those Sams. But here come the Strats. Bombs away. 1,000 health and kaboom! Doing heavy damage to Pappy's ACU as well. So he was standing right there within the blast radius of the bomb and the ACU nuke. I think that is pretty much going to wrap what is left of this game. The only ACU left alive is Pappy and he is taking hits from that Megalith. So that is going to be GG all the way around. Fat boy firing off into the distance as we're about to see a nuclear blast over there. Subcom is such a damn glorious game. Sometimes the red is a little overwhelming on Sirtis, but you know what? We'll deal. <laughs> and the light will claim us all. That's going to be it for this game. The North did very, very well at the beginning. The Strat Bomber Rush was awesome. They had superior forces on the ground. All of that flood of units on the left side. Um, there was good holding going on. Jolly did very, very well for being by himself on that one. And then Griff was able to fill in the cracks later in the game. But the longer this went on, the stronger the South side got until... That group of broadswords came online, and that's where scouting is key. If you know your opponent has gunships, you got to get mobile flak online because mobile flak is by far the best way to deal with gunships in any shape, form, or tier level. So, yeah, a little bit of an oversight on the north side, and they definitely paid for it with their commanders. Alrighty, guys, that is going to wrap it up for me. Hopefully you did not miss the little mini map too terribly much. Like I said, I will be working on that over the course of the next couple of days. And I just now realized that with my screen cap set up, you cannot see my pointer this entire time. Ah, no. Why? Oh, well, I will have it fixed next time. I promise on the pointer, the other stuff, not so much, but I will do my best. Alrighty guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. As always, thank you so much for watching and tuning in regularly. You guys are awesome about that. And I hope that you will send me replays if you have any good games that you see. Other than that, I am done. See you guys in the next one.